Welcome to the Gen Z Show. I'm your host, James McLam. Today, we're going to tackle again a topic that we've been discussing a lot lately, and that is how to prepare your young adult to transition from high school either into a career or to a college opportunity. And today's guest is Beth Prost from At The Core. Now, she has a very, very passionate approach to helping to prepare your student for your young adult for this transition, helping them move towards the work that they love, helping to, to investigate the options of potential careers or potential life journeys for them. She has a very uh, laid out approach in, in, in a format that helps students have an assessment of themselves, discover how to explore these different careers, and at the same time gives you some very practical tips on how to have an educational path planned for your young person. Does this sound interesting for you? You're going to love this. This goes very well with our conversation last week, something I know that you're going to find of great value. So let's get right to with Beth at At The Core. Beth, welcome to the Gen Z Show. Thank you for being our guest today. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you for inviting me. You know, we connected through a a site that connects podcasts and podcast guests. And I must say, I get a lot of invites on those, but but yours, when I saw it, I got excited. And what made me even more excited was, is that it had been like a week or two since I'd been on there. And then I went on and I saw that and I was like, okay, this is one I got to go for. Poof. Uh, well, what, yeah. well, James, James, what, what was exciting about what we were, I, I can guess that it was a, a connection, but I'm wondering what, what really caught your ear or caught your eye in, in, in that connection. Well, if folks are watching this, if they'll read the subheading under your name, where it says helping students prepare for life after high school, that is in essence what you were telling me you were doing. And then I yeah. quickly clicked on your site that we'll share later. Uh, And I was like, okay, this is who we need to be talking to. And when you and I first connected, I was also recording another podcast on this same topic. And uh, and things just like that happened. I was like, okay, we got to jump on this. I'm I'm really excited about this, Beth. Good. Well, I'm thrilled to be able to to share some thoughts today for students and for families um, n- navigating that path through high school toward mm-hmm. whatever comes next is, it's just so different than it was when we did it. It's it so was. different. And, Our and it, audience. it can sorry. be scary. It can be scary and it can be overwhelming and kind of hard to, to figure out what is the right way to go. So mm. I'm, I'm thrilled to talk about that today. Well, our guest uh, heard us, uh, our audience heard me uh, tell a little bit about you in the introduction, but they they really love to hear our guests share a little bit about more. So if you wouldn't mind, share a little bit about yourself to our audience. You bet. You bet. So first and foremost, I'm a mom and a, and a wife of, uh, gosh, almost 27 years, I think we've been married. 27? Really have to count. Um, two kids who are both in college, two Gen Z kids, uh, one was born in 2001. One was born in 2003. So um, I have I have been right there uh, as a, as a as a parent and as a um, career in college and high school, you know, advising professional, helping families, including my own kids, make their way through uh, their experiences. How I got to where I am. Um, I grew up in Indianapolis and uh, my parents met at Purdue University and it was really hard for all three of us kids to go anywhere else. And so uh, they were very proud of their education they'd received at Purdue. And um, all three of us kids went that way. The van seemed to know how to how to go (laughs) up to Purdue and drop us off. And so uh, I studied information technology at Purdue in the 80s. And uh, and that ended up, uh, I, I chose that because, um, honestly, my brother was, when my next brother was in the very same major. And I'm like, whoa, that sounds kind of interesting. It's a mix of, this. so not a lot of thought process went into it. And ha- partway through college, I thought, oh my gosh, I like what I'm learning, 
but the specific job that we're all marching toward didn't seem like it could be a fit for me. It was going to um, lack a lot of people interaction and was going to just be like a lot of behind a door coding. And I thought, how can I take what I'm learning and who I am, what my traits and strengths and interests are, and put those together into a job? And I got really worried that I wouldn't be able to do that. And I got very lucky mm. and found a job that kind of blended my personal strengths with what I was learning in college. So I didn't change my major, but ended up not doing that job that everybody was intending to do. And instead went out to work um, in the software industry, which no, no one knew what that was in 1990. It's like, oh, computers. That's, you know, but I was in that um, up, up to my up to my neck in technology uh, through the 90s and, and through the time when um, when I changed my path, uh, when I became a mom and I was able to do some other part time work and do mm -hmm. some work through that time when they were young. Um, and then to get to now um, in that time, as my kids were getting a little bit older and I'm watching <clears throat> friends, neighbors, family um, who teenagers who were older than my own kids start to make some decisions about what they were going to do at the end of high school. And I'm I'm watching them make their decisions. And these, it, they seem like extremely, I won't say weak decisions. I would say wobbly, maybe like, oh, I'm going to go to college. What are you going to study? I'm not sure. What do you, what kinds of careers feel like they might be a fit for you? No idea. We'll figure it out. And, 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 you know, between you and me, we know that there was a lot of money that was getting ready to be spent on some particularly unstable decision making. And so I would interact with these teens and use interviewing skills that I had from years of interviewing. And I would try to pose some very carefully crafted questions to these students to get them to think about who they were, what made them tick, what made them excited, what made them what do they struggle with? You know, what what is what do they find interesting? What do they prefer when given a choice between this and this? Which do you prefer and why? You know, what tell, tell me more about that. So I'd ask them these questions, um, and they'd say, oh, I've never thought that way before. Nobody ever never asked me questions like that before. But the intent was to help them um, answer these questions to make better decisions about what came next. And uh, about 10 years ago, I took that concept of helping teens through interviewing to consider their strongest traits and interests and then connect that to potential work experiences that could be a good fit for them. I took that concept, put that together, formalized it, and that's what we do now. There's uh, 15 of us on our team. Wow. I know it's so fun. Um, they, they're all so much better at it than I ever was. But um, they, they, and so all day long, you know, we're interviewing teens and helping them um, consider who they are and how those traits and qualities can connect to work that they will love. It's so fun. I love, I love what you're doing. I, I love the fact that, that you're pouring into this. And I see a pattern between you and, and Josh, our previous guest, is that you had careers. He was an attorney and you were doing well in them, enjoy them. But yep, there was a calling. There was a passion. There was, yeah. For Josh mentioned the fact, he says, I wanted to know when I was the most, when I was the happiest. And that was when I was in law school, helping other people prepare to take college interest exams or doing yep. tutoring. He said, but I saw that we could do so much more. Uh, when, when we know those things about ourselves, when we are truthful and honest about what we really like and what we're good at and what we struggle with, it's the key that unlocks the door to mm -hmm. work that we will love. And, and, and just a quick point on that. It is very much our mission to help every student move toward work that they will love. I want every student when they're done with their schooling, whatever, whenever that is, if that's after high school, if they earn some kind of two year degree or credential or certification, if they go to a four year traditional four year college, if they go to grad school, wherever it is that they get off the education bus and go to work, I want them to essentially love what they're doing. 
And that's not just magically going to happen. I want them to chuckle on their way to work and think, I get to go do this. And at the same time, James, Mm. I'll be honest, there's what we call toilet cleaning um, tasks that are associated with every job. There's things in my current job. You know, I'm smiling because I love what I do. Um, But there are little things about my job that uh, I'll procrastinate or put off. It's not my favorite thing to do. And I'll call those toilet cleaning tasks. Those are in every job, but I want students to see work for what it is and what it can be. And as long as they can maximize the things that make them joyful and play to their strengths and minimize the things that don't bring them joy, that's that's how they can move toward work that they will love. So what problem did you see that young people were encountering as they were preparing to transition from high school, looking to go out into the world, no matter what that looked like, what problem did you see there that you felt like at, uh, getting at the core could help them with? I, I'll, I'll tell you two right off right off the bat. One, um, one was posturing. And what I mean by that is uh, somewhere in those high school years, a student will start saying, you know, I'm thinking about this kind of career. And maybe they go to, you know, family events or, you know, some neighbor asks them, you know, what are you thinking about doing? What are you thinking about studying? And they'll say, <clears throat> you know, I'm thinking about being a, an, an engineer or I'm thinking about being a nurse or I'm thinking about being a journalist. And people will pat them on the back and say, that is fantastic. You know, move it on forward. That'll work out great. But very few people are. Uh, No one wants to challenge that student and sort of scratch a little bit beneath that surface Mm -hmm. and say, what evidence really is there, you know, of this being a good match? It could be, but but what has the student done to, you know, what kinds of experiences have they had that 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 have enlightened them about what that particular career field might be? What kinds of self-assessment work have they done to really take stock of who they are? or was it just that somebody told them along the line, you're good at math and science, therefore you should be an engineer and everybody just got on that bus. And and then, and, and the problem with posturing is at some point it gets revealed that, right. that, that's, that that's maybe not the right thing. And so it's troublesome if that happens once a, a family has gone through a whole, perhaps a college search process you know, paying, et cetera. And then that student gets in those first engineering classes. I hate to pick on engineering, but it's a common one that we, it's a common that we see um, that student gets in those first engineering classes and they're not at all what they thought the student, you know, that was what their concept was. And they call home to mom and say, I know this isn't right. So posturing is one problem. Um, And then a second problem that we saw is just sheer, uh, this is a phrase we've been using. We've, we've got permission from students to use it. They, they, they're uncomfortable a little bit with it at first, but then they own it. Career illiteracy. Our students oh. have ginormous issues with understanding anything about real world careers. They know precious little. They know what a teacher does because they're in a classroom all day long. They're the recipient of what a teacher you know, is providing. They kind of know what what a doctor and a nurse and a dentist do if they because they go to a doctor, right. a nurse and a dentist. If they're a sporty kid and they ever got injured, they've probably been to a physical therapist. So they kind of know what a physical therapist does. <clears throat> and then probably the worst one, they pick up tidbits from social media or for from television programs that represent certain jobs. Um in a, in a, in a not correct way. So I'll take the CSI effect, right? So a lot of students, <laughs> right? That crime scene investigation, they have a concept of what crime scene investigators do. And most crime scene investigators cringe at how their career is represented um, in those television programs because it's not accurate. Do you know that, and this is a, this is accurate in my area of the country, at least, that there was an increase in the number of schools offering as electives forensics as yep. a result. Yep. Because I asked, I said, why, where did this come from? This yep. is not something that I would say. It was like, oh, the kids were talking about they wanted to be in this. So we're now offering this 
course, you know, he's, it's one of the most popular from, courses they have on campus. And it I'm came like, from demand, right? The yeah. student said, we want this. And, and I have no problem with students learning science and scientific methods and techniques by taking a real forensics class in high school. I think that's excellent. What I don't want is for students to not engage during those high school years and to just say, oh yeah, based on you know my hours of watching mm -hmm. CSI, I know I want to be a crime scene investigator and let's go pick a college. And then they get there and they're like, oh gosh, this is a lot of chemistry. <laughs> yeah. And I love what you're talking about is career illiteracy, because I think, yeah. especially for our students that we, high school students that we treat as higher level academic students, mm -hmm. they have very, very low interaction with actual careers because all their time spent in school yep. is with these colleges, uh, these classes to prepare them for college or to give them credit towards college, but no, no interaction where, you know, I'm, I am, you and I are, are, are basically the same age. My, my oldest was born in 2000. My second was born in 2003. I went yep. to school in the 80s too. So um, started college in 87. Uh, for those of you who can do the math real quick, you can figure that out. Yeah, um, yeah. I started in 86. I'm right there with you. Yeah, we're, we're right there together. I figured we were. Uh, you know, when, I was, when we were going through school, when I was going through school, there was enough bandwidth during my time, the classes that I took, for me to take some electives and still have those college to prepare me for yep. you know, those classes to prepare me for college. There isn't that much. So uh, I, I, I would still, I would say that I, I agree with you, but I think there's also pressure that many students, especially those that are academically successful and are expecting or hoping to head on to a four-year college, they believe that their best choice during high school is to um, eliminate any of those other extraneous mm -hmm. choices, right? Don't take sculpture, don't take that cooking class, right? Put my head down and take kind of the toughest schedule I can to prepare mm -hmm. me for the rigors of, um, of college. And what we've eliminated, what we've, what that thinking eliminates is the ability to use high school as what it should be, which is a time of exploration. So, so I would uh, coach every family to really carefully inspect what do those classes look like each year during high school, right? What is the right level of, of challenge and what is the right level of being able to put in whether it's a, a joyful diversion kind of elective or whether it's kind of a career oriented elective and whether that's a tiny little elective like um, like a one semester graphic design class, you know, that mm -hmm. swings open the door for a student and they go, oh, that's kind of interesting. I'd like to do more or learn more about that. Um, and then also there are all across America, those amazing gold standard career technical lab programs um, which are longer programs, right? So usually they're about a half day junior and senior year. Um, so it is a commitment of time, but it's a way for your student to engage with engineering or nursing or cybersecurity or, you know, uh, bioscience, whatever's on your mind. There right. are career tech programs that a student can take and work into their schedule um, and then still show that they are taking challenging coursework to prepare them for college. So I would argue that with some thought and with some independent consideration, each student can enhance their high school schedule to take advantage of the options that are available to them during high school. I love the fact that you say it has to be, you know, that you're alluding to it needs to be an intentional planning. Yep. yep. Uh, and there is no, that this is not by any by any stretch of imagination saying that the guidance that they get from schools is no. bad or they no. are constrained, they are constrained too by yep. what they know testing centers and colleges are looking for. And, and that's a whole different argument. I mean, a whole it, different it podcast we can go into. It about is how the, yeah. But, but we have to, we have to honor and recognize what our school counselors are responsible mm -hmm. for doing. Um, yeah, they're they're really under looking for the best options for them. They uh, they absolutely are, but at the same time, we have loaded them 
with multiple things that they're responsible for. So they are yes. responsible for mental health counseling, drug and alcohol counseling, disciplinary counseling, you know, schedule counseling. And then, oh, by the way, career and college preparation and counseling. That's a lot of stuff. And then Which on when average, we were in school, I think our counselors were mostly career uh, counselors, you know, school related counseling is all I remember the three or four that we had at my high school interacting us with. I, I, there, there probably were some things that were going on behind the scenes. I'm sure there was, but that so, was not done. No, a big but. thing. Yeah. So today's counselor ha has to wear a lot of hats and mm -hmm. then, and then they also have a huge caseload. They have a big number of students. You know, I, my kids went to a, a, a well-ranked public high school in the state of Ohio and their high school counselors have between 400 and 500 students yeah. per counselor. So, so, I mean, the nature of that structure is that you have to just kind of pay attention to what the, you know, the squeaky wheel, as opposed to delivering value and goodness for everyone. So, so having said that, and, and, and even so, it is still every student's personal responsibility to leverage the options that they have available to them in high school and to just put your head down yeah. and take the next English class or take this particular class because my friends are in it. I am, I want that student to be more purposeful and more thoughtful and more discriminating about why they're choosing what they're choosing and to leverage all of the options that they have to make the most of those high school years. I, I think taking an elective, something as small as that graphic design elective, if you're thinking that's interesting, try it out, try it out. And you right. can see, you know, if you hate it, I'd rather figure that out right now then then make a decision to major in that because i think that's what i want i d scratch beneath the surface take action if i know our audience some of them are parents and they're thinking okay i like this concept of what you're talking about here so if a parent uh were to engage with you Mm -hmm. and and their son or daughter comes to your program what what are you providing for them what are what are you offering to them uh to them what's what's the plan that the, the that you have going forward that's an excellent question so so we really do work with families in three different areas and the first one is self assessment the second one is career exploration and those are actually kind of tied together for us um, and then the third one is educational path planning. So our philosophy is that families can engage with us in that cycle or mm -hmm. circle, self-assessment, career exploration, educational path planning. They kind of hop in wherever it makes sense to them. And we have different things that we do that they can engage with. But the vast majority of our time as an organization is spent doing deep one-on-one -on -one work with students who put their hand up and say, yeah, I really have a lot of question marks over my head about what I'm going to do after high school, but we've got to take some kind of action to, to be better um, prepared to have our student make some better decisions. So we do, uh, so, so that process is uh, that we do with self-assessment and, and career exploration combined is a one-on-one -on -one interview-based process where a student will be matched with a facilitator. They'll do five one-on-one -on -one interviews over the course of two to three weeks. So this is not, um, we don't use any kind of online assessment. I think those are fine and can be valuable for a purpose, but this is all um, the student articulating their experiences, what they know about themselves. They're doing it over time. Mm. So it's not just one where they can say, oh yeah, I'm really organized, you know, or I'm really <laughs> this. We, we extend this out so that really they, they have to be honest and they have to be thinking about who they are and what's important to them, the, the, that input from that student is then what we take and we analyze what they said. We collaborate on every single student. We put together, um, at, as part of that process, we put together a set of careers that can be a good fit for that student. We meet with the family and then we take it a step further several steps further, and we teach them how to do career exploration. 
Um, so if this is kind of a nice short list for you to think about that all match up with and align with your strengths and your interests and keep you away from the things that you struggle with, here's this list. We need to teach you how to actually navigate that list. Like what, you know, what does this career do? You know, what is a biomechanist? Mm -hmm. um, that was a recent one that a kiddo came up with. I, I did. That was a new one on me. These are people that, um, just so you know, do you know what a biomechanist is? This no, I was just thinking. That's why I went like that. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I made that yeah. face. So I was like, mm, I don't so, I'm not so sure I'm more familiar with that. And it is brilliant. It is um, it is a study, it is a study of how our physical bodies work to allow us to do things like walk or pitch a ball or mm -hmm. um kick or do a cartwheel, right? All it bio mechanist. So it's, it's very cool. Anyway, long story short, that kiddo would have probably never independently come up with that concept. And it is a, it's a great blend for, for that student. And she was able to dig in with her facilitator, learn more about that career and others. And then we teach them how to do an informational interview. And then we align them with an individual that has that job so that they can talk to someone who does that and they're prepared to do that. And then um, then they know how they, you know, so it's self-assessment career exploration. And then beyond that, just super quick, that third one that I talked about, educational path planning. So for 10 years, we've been doing that work, that one-on-one -on -one work with students that has a name. It's called guided self-assessment. So it's a self-assessment process, but it's done together with a guide. So it's mm. it has somebody right there with you the whole time. So in addition to that work, um, after families would, would close up that work with us, they'd say, and by the way, that work takes us about eight weeks on a calendar to complete all one-to-one -one, and we're work. It takes us about 40 hours of our effort and time to do that work with one student. It's, it's a, it's deep work. It's meant to be mm -hmm. long on purpose to allow that student to really consider and articulate and take ownership of who they are. So in addition to that work, we uh, were, were asked questions by our clients. They wanted to know, well, what about ACT and SAT? And how, you were so helpful with this part. Now we need to know about this other part. How do we go on college visits? And how do we even, what does a college oh. application look like? And all that stuff that frankly is not difficult, but there is um, a lot of confusion over those those steps uh, that, that a student can take to prepare for um, moving toward college. So we teach a lot of that and we teach a lot of that actually for free. Um, some of our deeper dive webinars have a $29 family access ticket. We, we're trying to basically share that information with as many people as, um, as needed. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So the one-on-one -on -one work and then the educational path planning. So tell me a, what, has been the results of some of the youth that have come through. So I'm given an opportunity to kind of share some, some case studies, some, some, some testimonials. Uh, Cause I, I, I'm thinking too, if I'm listening to this for the first time and, and when I've not had this conversation with you before, and I'm already passionate and I'm listening to it, I'm thinking, Oh my gosh, my child would do this, but okay. I yeah, like yeah, it, yeah. But what's it going to, yeah. what's it going to do for them? So. so, so the number one thing is, you know, y y you know, and I know we have kids the same age when they reach, um, I'd say, especially about halfway through high school. Uh, I, I often, I, I try to do the Heisman pose um, because that's what I think that that child takes the Heisman pose with us. Mm -hmm. They, they push us away and they're, they're gaining and seeking input from others. So one of the big things that uh, families mention when they talk about um, the gift of delivering this opportunity to their child is the fact that they get to work with someone who's not mom or dad, someone who's not a coach or a teacher that they know it is. We are an independent third party who is completely vested in helping that student think through and, and move through this self-assessment and career thinking. So that's number one is giving your, your child the gift of time and to do it together with a um, with someone who's who's an independent third party. Um, I think all of our facilitators would tell you that somewhere along the line, as our students are being interviewed, Another benefit is that we want them to have those moments of recognition, those aha moments, right? That at a time when they hear themselves saying something and they'll be like, okay, this is the third time 
I've talked about my mythology class. I really like my mythology class. I'm hearing myself say it. And they'll, they'll, they'll notice that about themselves. And sometimes too, we, we will prompt them. We'll think something is connected of, of multiple things that they've said. And we may say, you know, so you said this here and you said this here and you said this here, are those connected? And the student will be like, Oh my gosh, wow. I'm a people pleaser or, Oh my gosh. You know, I really do love to stand up and present to people, whatever it is. So those aha moments are another um, great thing that can come from it, that self-recognition. Uh, another benefit is that when a student sort of stirs up this thinking about who they are, what's important to them, beginning to see how it connects to careers, a um, couple benefits come. Number one, they can eliminate some things that they might have been thinking about or sort of move away from them. Like if mm -hmm. like if they were saying something and they come to recognize more about it and they recognize it's not right, big benefit um, in helping them move towards something. Another um, thing that happens during that college process is our students have to write a lot of essays about usually kind of some personal stories. Mm -hmm. So the telling of those personal stories helps with that. Um, I would also say that it has helped uh, most of our students be able to answer the question when they're on a college campus and they're talking with um, with an admissions official. And they'll say, tell me about yourself. Our students can be like, um, how much time do we have? <laughs> you know? So Because they've been thinking about who they are and what makes them tick. So most parents are just thrilled that their student, again, has that time to pause from the normal stuff going on in their life and to think about who am I? What's important to me? What kinds of goals do I have? You know, what kind of life do I want to live? How do I see myself fitting into the working world? You know, being honest and forthright, you know, as a, as a 16, 17, 18 year old is the key that mm -hmm. will unlock that door. So, so I hope, I hope that summarizes some benefits um, that we've seen at, uh, students and family share with us. Do you do this just uh, live, but you, you do it virtually as well? Like we, we sure do. So, so we've been doing it for 10 years and probably in the first year, we had a kiddo who was in Chicago who wanted mm. to do it. We are based in central Ohio. So how many states do you have uh, students from? All over. They, really? They, oh yeah. I, I mean, I'd have to look at the list right now, but I know, I know uh, this year alone, California, Utah, wow. I know uh, Texas. Yeah. But so we're in Central Ohio. It doesn't matter where we are. Mm -hmm. um, and our kids are quite comfortable uh, communicating in this forum. Um, I, I'll be honest, I prefer, I still prefer um, face to face. Yes. I like to see the whole human. And, and I know I pick up things um, from a body language perspective that you and I aren't getting in this setting. But having said that, um, to do it virtually works great. Our students, so we've been doing it virtually since way before COVID and way before, since year, year, year two of, of doing this. Let me ask you this because I, I'm thinking because we have uh, children that are the same age that would have been juniors when the COVID thing started. And I have made the statement before that I felt like of all the different age groups, that age, that year that got it to hit work. the hardest mm -hmm. yeah. because it hit them at the end of their junior year, which yeah. there's so much things that are prepping them and preparing them. And then they, they had a, no matter where you were, they had a weird senior year. They, even if they were remote or hybrid, <laughs> or maybe they were lucky enough to be in person, it still was weird. Have you and been talking mean, to my daughter? You are saying all, all the words. Well, that I, you know, I, I felt like, too, that that age group missed a lot of those little subtle things that yeah. teachers and educators at the school do to prepare them to launch. They you're didn't get me, that. You're going to make me cry because that is exactly true. They they did. And, and yet, and, and I'll just add one more thought to that. And because that class, uh, high school class of 2020, the, the ones that were seniors when COVID hit in March, right. communities all over America 
were aghast at the idea that these kids weren't going to have prom and weren't going to have graduation and communities rose to the occasion and did awesome oh my things. Gosh, I didn't even thought about it in this terms too. Awesome things. But yet when that class of 2021 came along and it was time for their, you know, homecoming and their Thanksgiving, whatever, um, it was like, well, of course we're not doing that because it's COVID. Mm -hmm. And yeah. The, and I mean, the other little things that they missed, like, Senior picture day was, yeah. was different. Se <laughs> assigning seniors their parking space. At my high school, the oldest girl uh, who's who's now in her first year of teaching uh, high school, you know, they had a big deal about giving them their parking space and going and decorating. My son, yep. you know, the junior, nothing. They, they didn't even get parking spaces and probably until like February. Or, you know, I know, I know. So, it so didn't, they didn't even need them because it was only half the school at a time. You know, so for so for that group, honestly, I like to believe. I thought I think about that group a lot. That that exact age, uh, that the set, sophomores that, now that, in college or second year out of school. That's right. They're they're the high school class of twenty twenty one. So those kids had had it pretty rough and saw some things that were were hard to stomach and hard to hard to really. Um, deal with and and they and they they all, they also saw people not doing you know they had like a whole year of online ish learning and mm -hmm. or some form of that and it just it just was not pretty they saw some they saw some some uncomfortable things i like to believe that because they had those unusual and uncomfortable experiences that they built some kind of resilience from mm -hmm. that that will serve them well later in life. That's I talked to I someone about this about a year ago in our, our interview who was doing some mentoring programming in, in North Carolina. We interviewed him and he he made the comment that it was it's really situation specific on what has happened uh, because there are some that they rallied to it. They had families that rallied to it. They understood it. They had systems in place, many sub communities in place that could support them in ways that other, he says, and then others were so ill prepared for what had happened. Yep. Uh, going forward. So that was, I was leading on that to, to ask this. So we got a sophomore a two year out. Are they still a candidate for your programs as well? That's a great question. So we have a window of time that we will work with students in that one-on-one -on -one guided self-assessment process. That's a great question. And that window of time opens at, in sophomore year of high school. And the reason why we won't do it earlier is because a student, remember, we're doing five one-hour interviews where that student is going to have to consider and think about all the experiences that they've had, right? So maybe jobs that they've had, maybe um, certainly classes that they've had, extracurriculars, um, family events and situations. So a student hasn't really, we have we find that they haven't amassed enough experiences until right. they get to uh, at least halfway through sophomore year. To, high to affirm you on that, as a uh, the decade that I taught, I always said that the students matured the most between that freshman and sophomore year, they they yep. changed the yep. most. Uh, yep. When they came back to me, it was like something went into their brain during the summer and changed them. <laughs> they were completely different. They were completely different human beings. They, they do. They they do. And I think part of it is I, I don't want to say it's the the not the shock of freshman year, but when you are you know you are new to the school, mm -hmm. it's a new experience. You're you're witnessing a lot of things happening around you, and then I think you you kind of use that year to to put it together and say now I'm not that lowest you know youngest in the high school. I need to step up a bit, and I can use what I gathered to take that next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so back to so we'll do it as as early as halfway through. Uh, sophomore year in high school. We will also, so we will have, this, so we're we're recording this in the month of February. This spring and this summer, we will actually certainly have high school juniors and high school seniors go through that guided self-assessment process with us. We will also have students who have completed one or two years of college who are still um, I don't want to say clueless. That's not, I, 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 we've never met a student who was clueless. We have met so many students who have just never been encouraged to consider 
and think and evaluate and connect in mm -hmm. the way that we coach them to do. And so, so when they have that person that's helping them think it through, it works great. So we'll do it through first and second year of college. Beyond that, they are, um, and, and actually let me even give a caveat with our college kids. So if a family called us today and said, you know, my kid will come home this summer from their first year of college and we just, I just want to sign them up for guided self-assessment. We um, will encourage that family because we are very practical people and um, we're paying for college. Most of us are ourselves, you know, for, for our work, we have kids in college. So we're experiencing what today's tuition and fees and all that look like. We will encourage those families to go back and have their child access career services at their college. We want them to exhaust the resources that they're already paying for inside that college. And if that doesn't, move the needle and help that student move forward, then we will talk with them and, and um, be willing to make space for that family. So if they're in, and then once they're halfway through college, they're so far or actually so much closer to being done that they're all, they're really kind of fitting into that adult side of things. And there right. are others who, there are others who will do work. Um, I, not quite similar to what we do, but there are a lot of people who will use, um, like online career tools and personality assessments with older students. Well, um, if our audience uh, uh, remembers about a month earlier than this, we had a uh, coach that takes them from that position that you drop them off at. That she, her, her coaching thing is to prepare them for life after college. Ironically, her name is Beth, too. Isn't um, that funny? All of, yeah. all of us Beths are, yeah, we're here to... And, I got and and we connected on the same site. Uh, that, that, That's that awesome. Did. So, 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 yeah, so she for, does that as well. She she prepares them for for life post college because she said so many of them are not not ready for that transition, and that's why uh, we honey. hear the stereotype of you're living in the parents' basement after getting home. So and and here's the thing, I just I'll say about that is our kids want to be independent and they want to do work that makes a difference and that fits mm -hmm. their strengths. And they, they absolutely do not, most of them do not want to live in our basement. I mean, they kind of view that as, well, I guess if I have to, or maybe for a short time. So it's our job to sort of craft the pathway and help them move toward that independent life. And, and so I've really only kind of focused and just talked about that self-assessment and that career exploration. We are also big believers as that other Beth is. I, I'm sure she would talk about um, students becoming educated and aware of all of those things that they need to know about, right? Being able to make a phone call to make an appointment. How do That's I what she talked about? What is insurance? Um, well, how to and, interview. How to enter certainly job preparation. Net yeah, is network. All those types of things that big element. Yeah. And the and we often think, well, won't the college help them with that? Not necessarily. I mean, and, and here's the tricky part about college. When you pay for that college education, your child, you know, well, I was going to say they kind of have to show up for classes. If they don't show up for classes, that that's like the bottom rung. Like if right. they don't show up, they don't get grades, they get kicked out. But the other stuff like mock interviewing or, you know, going to meet a, a company that's recruiting, those things are all optional. And a yes. student either will or won't engage with those. And a student could absolutely go all the way through college and have no relevant um, work touch points or experiences or interviews because those things are all technically no college makes a kid do that. Those things. And I know a college that doesn't provide that, but it's exactly like you said, they have to opt into it. They have to yep. choose to go to that career yep. placement building and, and go to them and say, or sign up online now or, or do something. That's right. Oh, and James, I tell families when they go on a college visit, when their, their students are in high school, make sure they stop at the career services department. Look at what is on the wall. Mm -hmm. Look at what the names of the companies are that are coming in to, to visit and interview. Um, talk to them about, you know, what kinds of workshops do you have to help students with resumes and placement and internships or co-ops. And, and I, I also tell them to note 
how difficult is it to find and access career services? So if it's mm -hmm. like on the edge of campus, down a dark alley, and you have to turn three times, and then there's some weird, like, like <laughs> knock, 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 you have to know the special knock. That's, that's not good, right? But but if but if career services is right in the union and like it's on the first floor, you can't miss it and they're out in front all the time, that's your student has a greater opportunity to engage with that and be comfortable with it. So as silly as it is, the location of career services and it sorry, we got off on a whole tangent there, yeah. but but in the end. But in the end, it is all about helping prepare our students to move through these very fast moving years of high school and college toward work that they will love and understanding full well that that is not just magically going to happen. It takes support and interaction, um, often from someone other than just mom or dad. Mm. How can our audience connect with you? What is the best way for them to connect with you? Um, this is kind of silly, but we encourage anyone to call with call, write, message us on Facebook, hit our website. We encourage quick questions all the time. People need a resource, so so don't hesitate. If someone's got quick questions, I encourage them. Um, and they'll find our phone number on on the website. You, so you put the website up. It's gettingatthecore.com. The company name is at the core. But right. when I went when I went to get at the core.com uh, 10 years ago, that was uh, gone. And so I had to get getting understand at that. Core. We've had those problems too. So I love love that. So getting at the core, that's what we help students do is right, get at the core of who they are. So getting at the core.com will get you there. Um, a couple of just quick, quick things for families. One, we produce a weekly um, high school, college, and career planning newsletter. It's free. Oh. It's filled with a ton of information. Comes out every single Sunday morning. Um, so families can subscribe. So getting at the slash subscribe can get you there. Um, to just and it's get easy to find an audience because I went on their site and I found where that was located. I mean, it's very easy to find. Yep, yep, yep. It, and, and then on top of that, if someone wanted more information about guided self-assessment, that'll be under a... Um, a uh, menu on that website. I think mm -hmm. it's under what we do. They'll find guided self-assessment. And then I mentioned as well, if, if a family is like, I, I like that, but my kiddo might know what they want to do. And I liked that stuff that she was talking about with like the educational path planning and how do I know how to navigate, you know, the mechanical parts of, of college visits and ACT, SAT and extracurriculars and college applications and all that. That's that other stuff that we do. Um, that's very technical. You'll find that listed uh, also on the website under our events um, page. They're just all listed. Um, I'm doing one tonight, as a matter of fact, on uh, it's the ultimate family planning guide for uh, ACT, SAT, and PSAT. And yes, yes, families, those are actually still important. They are. <laughs> and if they want to know how important, go back to the episode with Josh and Ravitch as he talks about why those are still necessary. Um, I, I, I hear so many people say, I, you know, they'll, they can be one grocery aisle over and I'll hear the conversation between a couple of moms or a couple of dads. Those tests aren't needed anymore. And I just want to like go, you know, it's like, that's not true. And, yeah. you know, and I, if I they want to know why he gave a very clear argument uh, right up at the beginning of the interview, or why it was, Excellent. why it's made very art very clear that you really can't dispute what he said. Uh, I, I honor greatly um, all of my peers who are helping support students to, to be the human that they, that, they, that they have inside of them, the potential that they have inside mm -hmm. of them, and to leverage opportunities and experiences that they have and to propel them ultimately toward work they will love. So thank you for doing all you do to help well, create you. conversations. Well, Beth, thank you so much for being our guest today. I really, really enjoyed this conversation. And for our audience, all the links, and, and I'll also put your social media links up as well, thank you. are in the show notes. So if you're watching, obviously click down. If you're listening, go to your app and you'll find those there and, and you'll be able to get direct access uh, to them in any way it is for it. So thank you so much uh, for your time today. I really appreciate this. Uh, it. it I, th I, I think parents need to embrace this concept more. Um, I, I hope that families just came away with even a couple of actionable things that mm -hmm. they can 
take back into their into their families and and utilize. So thank you for the opportunity to talk about what we do. And audience, thank you for sticking with us. Listen, audience, there is someone that you know that really needs to hear what we talked about today. So just share, like, and comment on this on the app or in YouTube. And we'll see you again next week on the Gen Z Show.